so now that we've gone through <clears throat> the principles of cardiorespiratory endurance training, muscle strength and muscle endurance training, flexibility training, and also training for improvements in body composition, it's now time to take a look at the, the whole spectrum of fitness planning and to begin to give consideration to developing a holistic personal fitness plan. Or in other words, how do we put it all together? So again, very important to start out with goals. What are we trying to accomplish? So it's time to set goals. And then after you set goals, it's time to select the activities that you will participate in in each of these different areas of fitness. After you've selected those activities, it's time to set targets for each activity. Targets are going to be you. Are going to be established. You're going to use the fit principle. So you'll set frequencies, intensities, times, or durations. To achieve success. You want to take your individual goals and attach them to a reward system. So when you meet a goal, you have some way to congrat congratulate or to rebuild motivation. It's going to be important to incorporate what we call lifestyle physical activity. I'm just going to read you physical activity here is PA. So to have that lifestyle physical activity that's in place. So it's not just about increasing your exercise, but changing your lifestyle to incorporate opportunities for more routine physical activity. We also want to have usable and established monitoring tools. And then lastly, in the whole process, it's very important to set all of this on a killer. So we're going to address each of these topics in more detail, starting with the goal setting process. Important to remember to set both general and specific goals. General goals may include things like, I want to feel better, or I want to be in better or more in shape. So these aren't really all that quantifiable, but they are still very realistic. Whereas your specific goals, which are generally thought of as being how you're going to achieve your general goal, the specific goals are going to be more quantifiable. So I want to dec decrease my one mile run time by two minutes. So that's very quantifiable. And it's going to help me to achieve the state of feeling better or to be in better shape. In addition to setting general and specific goals, you want to take a look at goals from a long-term and a short-term perspective. So set long-term and short-term goals. So maybe we take this goal of decreasing the one-mile run time by two minutes. And we break this up and we say, okay, within 
two months I want to reduce my one mile run time by 15 seconds. And then as a second more long term goal in six months reduce the one mile run time by one minute. And you get the picture here, you can set another goal for 12 months out or for nine months out. Pick away at another portion of time. Important to remember to set realistic goals. Set realistic goals. So for most of us, decreasing a one mile run time by two minutes is probably pretty realistic. But let's consider a goal that may not be as realistic for most of us. That may be to become an Olympic athlete or an Olympic marathoner by the next summer games. So something that's probably not near as realistic for many of us. So make sure the goals are realistic. Don't set goals that are virtually unobtainable. It's important to select activities. And to select these activities that are going to accomplish your goals, help you accomplish your goals while also creating a environment that is conducive for your success. So just remember real quick the health related fitness components. As you are selecting activities, you want to make sure that you're selecting activities that are going to cover these health related fitness goals or that are going to uh, be conducive for use with these health related fitness goals. Things like the cardiorespiratory endurance, and muscle strength, and muscle endurance components, and the flexibility component, and lastly, body composition. So you want to give regard to these different health related fitness components. And you don't want to say, okay, I'm going to use basketball, pick up basketball for my cardiorespiratory endurance, and I'm going to use racquetball for muscle strength, and I'm going to use playing soccer for muscle endurance. These may not be the most appropriate choices, as many of those are probably related to uh, just a single factor there. So some additional considerations. Make sure that you choose activities that you enjoy, that you find fun, or that you have an interest in. If you don't like to run, then maybe that's not the best choice for an activity. Also, this is not a time to consider a new challenging sport or a new challenging area of interest. You want to look at your current skill and your fitness level. Also make sure that these activity choices are done with consideration of the time that you have and how convenient they can be. If you live in a part of the country that doesn't have any whitewater rivers, then whitewater kayaking is probably not going to be the most convenient choice of an activity. Also consider the cost. How much does it cost? Uh, you know, running shoes are relatively inexpensive compared to a new two or three thousand dollar road bike. Also pay attention to any of your special health needs and select activities that are going to jive well with those special health needs and aren't going to cause those special health needs to become 
barriers to success. Now after you've selected your activities, consider your reward system and develop a reward system. Now again, remember that you are going to break your specific goals into small little achievable packets, smaller achievable short-term and long-term goals. So you can consider those specific goals to be steps in your plan. In each of these steps, you want to have a specific target date. It may be a specific calendar date, or it may be in two months from now, or in six months from now. So set that target. Now allow several weeks between these steps, or what we can call your mini goals. So if you have one set for two months from now, maybe consider another one to be four months from now. And establish a reward that goes along with that target date when you've achieved that mini goal. And so examples, maybe you get to go to a movie or you get to go out for a special meal at your favorite restaurant or you get to buy a new blouse or a new, a new or article of clothing. So those would be the rewards for actually achieving the targets uh, and, and the goals that you've set. Important to incorporate lifestyle physical activity. And so in addition to setting goals and activities and undergoing cardiorespiratory endurance exercises, muscle strength and endurance exercises, flexibility training, body composition changes, also set up a lifestyle physical fitness program. And the lifestyle physical fitness is all about accomplishing a higher level of activity on a daily basis. Be more active. And so examples of ways to be more active is to just simply get up and move in between classes or at work. Go out for a walk for part of your lunch break. Uh, walk between buildings on campus or between buildings at your uh, place of employment. Use a health journal to track these activities. You also are going to want to monitor changes that are occurring, the improvements that are being made. So you want to have pre-established monitoring tools. A couple examples include things like a program log. And this image that I have here shows you what a program log can look like. And you'll have the activity in one column, the days of the week in the other, and then within that programming log, you put down how much swimming, in this case, how much swimming you did, how many, how long you played tennis, when you did your weight training, and when you did your flexibility training. You can total those things up, and each week you can see do you have improvements or increases in the overall activity that is being performed. In addition to the program log, you also want to keep track of your progress. And the best way to do this is in chart style, and to create a graph or a physical representation that includes not only your actual changes, but your goal, how you want to make those changes. So in this case, we have weeks of the program on the x-axis, and you can see it's a total of 26 weeks. And the, the, the activity is the number of push-ups, so this is a muscle strength activity. And at the very beginning of the plan, the individual could perform 15 push-ups. And their goal is to increase that up to what looks like about 29 or 30 individual push-ups. And so each week they go through the training program, 
And every week they're creating a new data point here where they're evaluating how well they're doing. And you can see that they are making progress that fits very nicely over the goal and the line that's drawn out for that goal. So those two tools there are going to be very useful and will help to maintain your level of commitment as you begin to see your goals being achieved and your rewards being granted. So be committed. Use these tools to help out with that commitment. For some people, the commitment is, is there without any additional, uh, any additional tools or anything like that. But for some of us, we have to make a contract. So you might have to develop a contract to make it binding and to find somebody who can be an accountability partner for you. Uh, this is just an example of a uh, potential contract, so to speak, that you could have. And you'll see you have a witness to signature down here at the bottom. This is your accountability partner. Are you actually doing what you set out to do? Are you seeing changes because you actually are participating in those activities that you have planned to participate in on a routine basis. So some of us may have to actually write out a physical contract to keep us on pace. Now there's two additional things that will help create a positive working environment for your fitness program. The first one is proper exercise footwear. And proper exercise footwear is going to be critical because it does help to reduce the risk of injury and just general uncomfortableness. So you want to make sure that your footwear you maintain and that you check the fit of that footwear carefully. There are many fitness stores uh, with, shoe, with shoe sections the trained individuals who can give you a fit test and can figure out what the optimal footwear is for your stride and your gait. So utilize those, uh, those benefits in some of these stores and undergo things like a gait analysis. And make sure you're getting put into a foot, I'm sorry, put into a shoe that matches your foot and matches your gait style. So match your shoe to your footfall style. Some of us walk on the outside of our foot, so we need a shoe that can support better that footfall landing on the outside of the foot or, or vice versa, inside of the foot. You can choose to support the footfall on the inside of the foot. So very important to have well-maintained, well-fitting footwear. Now the last thing that is going to be critically important in your success is sleep and getting an adequate amount and a high quality type of sleep. Now when we look at individuals there is variation and that amount that's required for each individual is going to vary. Some individuals do really well with six to eight hours of sleep. Other individuals need a longer amount of time. So the amount that's required per individual is going to vary. But one thing that we can say with pretty high certainty is many of us do not obtain enough sleep. Now sleep, there's a lot of really neat biology that happens with sleep and a lot of changes that happen uh, during the sleep pattern. Uh, and there's two types of sleep, what we consider to be very deep sleep and then what we consider to be rapid eye movement sleep. And both types of sleep are very critically important. And they're critically important because there's different physiological things that happen during those two different uh, two different types of sleep. During rapid eye movement sleep, or REM,
the individual has high brain activity. So high brain activity. This is the type of sleep because of the high brain activity that's associated with dreams. So during rapid eye movement sleep, you continuously dream. And some of the physiological functions that we know occur, that we know occur during rapid eye movement sleep, include things like development of memory. Sleep uh, during this phase of rapid eye movement also facilitates neuroplasticity. Which is the brain's ability to respond to the stimuli and the things that have happened throughout the individual's conscious period. Now the other type of sleep is just simply called non-REM sleep. And this is a very deep sleep. And what happens during this very deep sleep is the brain activity decreases substantially. So we have very low brain activity. And the, the electrical activity that occurs in the brain occurs in, in waves. And during this low brain activity, not only is it just a lower quantity of activity, but the brain waves become very slow and very even. And what we recognize or what we know from a physiological perspective during this non-REM sleep, the functions that go along with this sort of sleep are going to include body repair and regrowth of tissue. So during your exercise, as you've altered tissues and you've gone through and you've maybe broken down some tissues in response to the stress of exercise, it's during this deep sleep, this non-REM sleep, where those tissues are repaired and they actually are going to be repaired in such a way that after they've been exposed to these deep, um, deep sleeping patterns, the tissue is going to be stronger, it's going to be a better functioning tissue. We also know that there's higher activity in the bones and in the muscle. So during this non-REM sleep, we build our bones up and we build our muscle tissue, we repair both of those tissues. And then the last thing that happens during this non-REM sleep is at the time in which we strengthen the immune system. time when we strengthen the immune system. So sleep becomes very important uh, as we go through this fitness planning process. And a lot of times, in a lot of ways, what we really like to think of is your fitness planning is like the silence of a song in which the activity and the exercises is, is, is placed into. So sleep is the way in which we rest and recover and regrow our tissues and the way that we strengthen things like our immune system.